Good morning, church. This is Pastor Tracy Cox. And before we enter into our sanctuaries for worship, I wanted to give a brief announcement about next week's worship. Next week is All Saints Sunday. It is a very special day in the church where we remember our loved ones who have gone on to live in glory um, during this past year and um, in our communities and around our world. One of the things that we do is we light a candle in remembrance of those um, whom we name. And so since we're not together, we're going to be lighting some names from church. Feel free to send in the name of your loved one um, to the church office by, by tomorrow, by Monday, October 26. Get in touch with us and send that on in. But if that is not something that, that happens or the timing doesn't work out for you, I invite you to find a candle in your home, or perhaps you go out and buy a new one. Perhaps you've received one as a gift. Perhaps like these candles, you have some that have already been used. And when we come to that portion of worship next week where we are lighting candles and remembering and naming and giving great thanks for our loved ones, um, I would invite you to light that candle at that time. If you have any questions, just get in touch with the church. Hey, thanks for listening, and um, we'll see you a few minutes for uh, the rest of worship. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. Good morning, church. This is Pastor Tracy Cox of First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, and I am very grateful that we're able to worship together this morning. I would invite you, perhaps, as we prepared for worship, to get your Bible or grab your Bible. We're going to be looking at Psalm 90 and the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22 today for some of our, our prayers and our hymns and our the, even the message. And so I invite you to do that at any point and have that beside you. I also invite you to join along in the chat room beside, beside the worship service going on right now. Reconnect with your friends, say hi to your family, maybe even introduce yourself because it may be one of the first times you're here. If you have questions about the church, please get in touch with us, and we would love to connect with you in conversation. All right now, 
Just remember to take that deep breath in and prepare our hearts and our minds from worship, from the sanctuaries from, of our homes and the sanctuaries of our hearts. Let us worship the God who loved us first. All that was, all that is, all that ever will be, dwells in the life of God. We, we are inseparable, inseparable from, from generations, generations past and generations future. future. The so, lives of the ones who came before us are present all around us. The, the needs, needs of, of those to come call upon us today. today. What are we doing with all we have inherited, the wonderful and the terrible? What, what will, will we leave, leave behind? behind? May God's blessing be upon us as we strive to live faithfully in the day we have been given. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washing their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Jesus, Jesus. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor, neighbors are black and white, neighbors are near and far away. Jesus, Jesus. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve, these are the ones we should love. All oh, these are neighbors to us and you. Jesus, Jesus. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Loving puts us on our knees, serving as though we are slaves. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Jesus, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Hi kids, welcome to family time. It's almost Halloween, so I thought I'll tell you a spooky story. Not far from where you are now, there's a deep, dark wood. And in that deep, dark wood is a winding, dark 
And at the end of that winding, dark path is an old, dark house. And at the front of that old, dark house is a heavy, dark door. And inside that heavy, dark door is a long, dark hallway. And at the end of that long, dark hallway are some creaky, dark steps. And at the bottom of those creaky, dark steps is a dank, dark basement. And in the far corner of that dank, dark basement is a small, dark closet. And inside that small, dark closet is a great, dark chest. And inside that great, dark chest is a little pink lollipop. <laughs> I had you. You were kind of scared, weren't you? That wasn't what you were expecting, was it? You know, in our gospel lesson for today, somebody comes up to Jesus and asks him, what is our religion all about, Jesus? And I think that this guy was expecting Jesus to say, it's about being good. It's about being nice. It's about not pinching your brother or your sister. It's about sharing your toys. It's about helping your parents around the house. It's about being a good person. But Jesus said, no. What is at the very heart, the very root of our faith is to love God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your body and your mind and to love your neighbor and to love yourself. That's it. That's what Jesus says is at the very root of what we believe and live out as Christians, what we do uh, here in church and what we do hopefully in our whole lives. That this whole thing is about love. That's the treasure inside the chest. That's what Jesus came to show us. So I hope that you know today, even when you're a little bit scared, that God is with you and that God loves you right where you are. I invite you to pray with me. Eternal wisdom, in the midst of all of life's noise, we long to recognize your voice where we have been led astray by the loudest and most visible, the power hungry and the greedy, you call us back. Back to your way that nourishes. Back to the dreams of your prophets. Back to what grounds and sustains. Today and always, may we be open to your spirit whose truth leads us home. Amen and amen. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia.
When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Set at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that's given to us. We thank you for this wonderful way that we're able to worship together, to pray together, to learn together. I ask God that you would use the words and the meditations of our hearts and of our minds and of our mouths to um, come together come together in your grace and in your love. It is in the name of Christ that we pray, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Can you imagine a tree, a strong and healthy tree, a a profoundly deep-rooted tree that has withstood season after season after season of life? Is there a gently flowing stream by this tree, perhaps? Or has the tree grown awkwardly from a crevice in the rocks? Or or is this tree a lone tree far ahead on the prairie? Or is this tree one of many in the forest? Is the tree far away? up on the horizon, or or are you standing at the foot of where the tree trunk meets the ground? Or maybe, maybe you've climbed the tree and you are perched on a sturdy limb. Is the tree you see tall? Is it an evergreen with pine pine cones bursting from the branches? Are the leaves vividly changing color and and falling one by one by one to the ground? Or is the tree short and sturdy with branches willowing to the ground? Now on this tree, what does the trunk look like? Is it rough and ragged, knotted by history? Or is it smooth and slippery and green? Are there animals that are able to use this trunk for shelter or for a home? Can you see healing in the bark from past injury and brokenness? What about the roots? Can you see the roots above the ground sprawling wide in their reach, breaking ground, new ground as it grows? Or are the roots hidden deep, deep in the beautiful, safe, sacred dark of the soil? Oh, this tree, this tree has much to teach. For this tree has weathered much. This tree, though, remains centered on its core of roots that extends deep and wide. These roots bring nourishment and grace and strength and life to the whole tree. This tree is proof that life comes fast and hard sometimes. There are visible and invisible scars that will remain with this tree for its full life. 
And by looking at this tree, one can see that sometimes, by the example of a deadened and broken branch, that proves sometimes the tree or part of that tree has moved off center of the roots and cannot survive on its own. Life can be like that, broken, off center, distracted and torn apart. Perhaps we are not drawn off center the same as a tree, but we too can be disjointed and distracted. And one way, one way that I see myself being drawn off center, off my core, especially in this political season, is through chatter. Chatter in conversation with my family, with my friends, with my neighbors, and even strangers that I run into. Chatter that I run into with social media or rallies or my my goodness, sometimes this chatter just seems inescapable and I find myself a bit off kilter and fatigued. And it's very unsettling. And there is a lot of chatter, all kinds of chatter in our world. There's political and social and religious and, and this chatter seems to lead us away from our grounding and, and that which we believe is true to our core. Chatter can distract us from our core, our core that God loves us, that we are called to love God and our neighbor. And chatter can distract and pull us away, away from questioning things that we should. Like how? How do we get to the next season of life's journey knowing and putting into practice what we have learned from our lives? For instance, the incessant political chatter that surrounds us right now, the chatter of law and order, how does that help us? Does it center us safe in the boundary of how we are to live life together? I would say no, it does not. I mean, it sounds good to say. It sounds intelligent to say. It's, it sounds safe to say and perhaps even noble to say. But the reality of our lives together is that law and order is not practiced the same for everyone or everything. Law and order is not applied to the same justly or equally to everyone or every situation. It is useless chatter if law and order only incorporates or includes the corporate profits, if it only includes rich people, if it only includes white folks in our communities. You know, even in the church, we chatter a lot nowadays, and I don't know, perhaps we have always had a lot of chatter. We talk a good talk about laws and how to order things. We have the Ten Commandments. We have history lessons of life lived long ago, and we have stories that teach beautiful lessons of God's love for us in the Bible. We, the institution of the church has bylaws and, and vision statements and ways that we're supposed to order church. But I will say, the church's history has revealed that the institution has fallen short on presenting rules, laws, and a way of life where all can flourish, where that is all equally shared. Our own United Methodist Church history, brief as it is, truly is chock full of injustice and oppression. Racism, from genocide of Native Americans to enslaving people to Jim Crow laws and even to negating Black Lives Matters by saying very shortly that all lives matter. White supremacy is the basis for much of the chatter nowadays and I would say especially in the church. Sexism is chatter. I mean, it wasn't until a little over 60 years ago that women in the Methodist tradition were ordained and given full, full clergy rights. And still, even to this day in Western Pennsylvania, there is much chatter about what the Bible says about women in the pulpit and preaching and teaching over men. 
And for our LGBTQIA plus siblings, General Conference 2021 is just around the corner, and there is so much chatter about full inclusions and call to the ministry and, and marriage. Now, that chatter can lead to some vital, very important conversations. But if left unchecked, this chatter can pull us away from our core understanding of how we live life together for the flourishing of all. And add to that history, a pandemic, and now the chatter includes the words of things about air exchange and safe building occupancy, and it seems that we can be drawn off our center and the deep-seated truth of who we are is easily lost sight of. So, we are called again today by a patient, loving God. From the Gospel of Matthew, we are called back from our chatter to our core to receive stability and calm, to receive truth, to receive hope and power and, and reassurance that God loves us and is with us always. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. That's it. That's our center. That's our core. That is where we begin practicing life together, loving God, in tension with living life, loving ourselves and loving others. It is a huge tension that is exhausting and often messy. But there is no chatter in the center of this scripture. It's like that tree that has been planted, a tree whose roots cannot be seen, but hold the tree in the center of what it is meant to be throughout every storm, every flood, every fire, every lumberjack saw, every pandemic. The roots hold firm, while the tree may be distracted by chatter of every form, but the tree as a whole remains. Yes, there is chatter on all fronts, but our core is centered on the gospel, that we are loved by God. With everything we are and everything that we think and that we feel, we are loved by God. That doesn't mean that life will be easy and free from pain. We know that that's not life. And we are to love God with all that we have. And we are to love our neighbors as ourself. And this love work is justice work. And it is messy and hard. But you know what else? This, this justice work is the source of joy in our lives. This love work is nourishment for our community to stay on center. Amen and amen. Beloved, God's teaching surrounds us. If we wish to know love, to understand justice, or to embody wisdom, we must only pay attention. The gospel is always coming alive somewhere. For every new way that God reaches to us, takes on flesh and manifests within and around us, let us bring our offerings with gratitude. Incarnate One, especially in these times of uncertainty. 
We hope to be companions of righteousness. We hope to divest from all that destroys. We hope to live into the spirit of Christ that sets the captives free. With these offerings, we pray that our gratitude will manifest in acts of radical love where and when they are needed most. Amen. Receive the blessing for this day. Blessed are the ones who are nourished by the gifts of heaven. Those who dwell in the lands of truth, reach for the ways of justice, and seek the joy of collective liberation from generations of violence and domination. They are like trees planted by streams of water. With our hearts set upon the teachings of God, let us go and seek this transformation of grace. Amen and amen.